thank you uh, so much, uh, Terrence, uh, for taking the time out to uh, join us uh, today. And good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on summer fire safety tips for older adults. Our guest today is Terrence Keeby, and he will talk about fire safety tips and how to protect yourself and have a plan in place. This presentation will be conducted in both English and Spanish. The English portion will be from 11 to 11.30, followed by Spanish from 11.30 to 12 o'clock. Feel free to ask questions by typing them in the chat box or by unmuting yourself. And thank you all for joining us. And Terrence, over to you. Okay. Good morning, everyone. My name is Firefighter Terrence Kibi. I'm a proud member of the FDNY. I've been a firefighter for 19 years. I work in the Harlem area of uh, Northern Manhattan. Um, I joined the fire safety unit two years ago just to do a little more than just work in a uh, small area that our firehouses are located. Um, with the fire safety unit, we go out to all public uh, places, giving out fire safety information from the ages of four all the way to senior citizens. And just another uh, avenue of the fire department and uh, helping the community. Um, first thing I want to touch base on is uh, surge protectors. Okay, many of us use these. Okay, um, especially right now with uh, the heat being upon us, everyone is trying to stay cool. We're using ACs. I want to tell everyone we should not be plugging anything that heats or cools into these items. We should not be placing refrigerators, air conditioners, microwaves, things like that, that are high volume, high current items into surge protectors, power strips, whatever uh, name you like to call them. Also, the same goes with extension cords. Okay, a lot of times people are using extension cords because I get it, the buildings we live in, the homes we live in are a little older. They aren't retrofitted for that air conditioner that is in the window. There is an outlet conveniently nearby. Uh, we have to use these. Um, with that being said, we're not saying that you cannot use them, but if we do use them, we wanna make sure we're using the proper one. We wanna to go to Ace Hardware, Lowe's, Home Depot, PC Richards, an accredited store that sells air conditioners and uh, we get one made especially for an air conditioner, a microwave, refrigerator, okay? Because a lot of times, guess what? If we're using this, that means we wanna hide it because it's pretty bright, orange, ugly. We don't want this being seen. So what are we doing? We're running them on the carpets. We're running them behind the sofa, underneath the bed. So you are never checking these, okay? These things heat up and they tend to fail, okay? So that's a big thing. So if we're gonna be using these, okay? They're made for low voltage items. These are made for TVs, cell phone chargers, computers, things like that, lights, not made for uh, air conditioners. A lot of times we use these, guess what? When they do fail, some of them uh, have the little surge protector. They short, they short out or so they turn off. What do we do? We reset them and then we just keep going. Okay, that's not the case. We shouldn't be doing that. Okay, if you have any of these and the, around these air outlets, they're black or melted, discolored, we should be dis discarding of this. We should be replacing them. That means they're failing. Okay, last year alone, Queens had seven fatalities uh, with air conditioning usage and uh, surge protective usage failing for, for people using air conditioners. Okay, a big thing is, you know, we want to use these properly. Next thing I'm going to talk about is cooking. Okay, so we're cooking. Fire department preaches right size lid. Okay, we want to make sure we have a lid that fits the pot that we're using. Okay, I grew up in a home raised by my grandmother. She used one lid for every pot, no matter what size. Big, small, medium, it didn't matter. Um, with that being said, no, no, no. Okay, we want to use the right size lid. Reason being, if you're cooking, you have to step out of the kitchen, you have a little issue, okay? Your smoke detector goes off. We all should have one of these. Smoke detector, your smoke detector goes off, okay? You come back into the kitchen, you see some small flames in the pot, you want to shut that stove off, put the right size lid on. Guess what? Now that fire is contained. It's in this pot, okay? It's not gonna, it's not gonna spread. 
It's not going to go anywhere. Okay, we want to leave that pot on the stove. If the lid is too big or too small, guess what? Air is still going to be entering that that pot. Still going to be fueling that fire. Okay, so when the right size lid is correct, it's sealed. It contains it to the pot. Another cooking tip: baking soda. Okay. Uh, we would love for everyone to have a uh, fire extinguisher at, uh, in their home, but a lot of times people don't, but everyone should be able to have baking soda, okay? Baking soda is sodium bicarbonate, which is the same thing that we find in a fire extinguisher, okay? So if you have a uh, grease or oil fire, guess what? We just rip the top off that bottle or that box. We take that, we just place this uh, baking soda in the pot. It'll suppress that fire. Okay, so if we have grease or oil, we want to use baking soda. We never use water, okay? Water will magnify that fire, okay? It will intensify that fire and help it grow, okay? Now back to uh, the smoke detectors. Um, your first line of defense, okay? Smoke detectors are uh, important because they should be used in every home, okay? If you do not have a smoke detector, you can buy one or you can call the Red Cross, okay? The Red Cross has partnered up with the New York City Fire Department and they're giving them out absolutely free to New York City residents, okay? As long as you live in the five boroughs and do not live in a NYSHA building, you are available to get one of these, okay? The number for that is 1-877-RED-CROSS, okay? One eight seven seven Red Cross is the number that you would call, and you can get a free uh, smoke detector, carbon monoxide detector. Okay, the this is a dual. It's uh, carbon monoxide and smoke. Okay, if we have the newer style ones like this one, it's going to give off two sounds: one for smoke, one for carbon monoxide. Okay, the smoke it's three beats, the normal sound which we all are aware of. And then if you have carbon monoxide in your home, it's gonna give you four rapid beats, okay? So you should know the difference in sounds, okay? So three beeps, smoke, four rapid beeps, is carbon monoxide. Another thing I wanna to touch base on is um, candle usage. Um, I myself still use candles in my home. I like an open flame candle, traditional style candle. Uh, use it for aromatherapy, make my home smell good. Uh, the fire department uh, would like New York City residents to uh, phase out of that style candle and go into an LED candle, which is a battery operated candle. This is a cheaper one that uh, you can that I picked up at the 99 cent store, but they do have nicer ones. You know, I'm sure you can find one on Amazon or Bed Bath and Beyond, places like that. But the reason being, you never have to worry about this you know, causing a fire. Open flame candle, still dangerous, okay? We should be using them properly, placed in the middle of a table, away from small children, away from pets, okay? Um, anytime we leave the home, we should be extinguishing that candle. Anytime we go to sleep, we should be extinguishing that candle. That's a big thing, okay? Another thing that has to do with flames, uh, cigarette smoke. I mean, you are cigarette smokers, um, Smoking is still the number one cause of fire across the country, okay? Still the leading cause of residential fires in the home, being an apartment building, residential homes, things like that. Um, people are still smoking and not taking responsibility for their actions, okay? If we smoke, we should not be smoking in bed. We should not be smoking laying down on the couch, okay? We would love for everyone to smoke outside of their home. It's the safest place to. But realistically, we know that's not going to happen. So we should take the proper precautions and use a proper ashtray. We shouldn't be extinguishing those cigarettes in cups or plates, okay? We should have a proper ashtray. Make sure you take that ashtray, fill it with a little bit of water in the bottom so that cigarette butt is fully extinguished, okay? A lot of times, people are taking that cigarette butt and uh, extinguishing it, throwing it into a... Um, Throwing throw it into a, a cup or a plate and they just take it and they throw it into their garbage. Guess what? Everything in your garbage can is combustible, meaning it will light on fire. It is flammable. Okay, so that cigarette butt can 
go into that garbage can. Now that garbage can is on fire. And depending where that garbage can is in your home, that room will go on fire. Okay. And so on and so forth. It will magnify. Okay. Um, now, uh, big thing we should know, the type of buildings that we live in. Uh, right now, with uh, schools being out, our children are home with us. Uh, the fire department is urging we should be practicing fire drills at home with our, with our families. Okay? Know your plan of evacuation. Know where your uh, second exit is in your home. Okay? Whether it be a uh, door, uh, a second door in your apartment, or a uh, fire escape on, attached to your building, okay, or in your, in your private dwelling, the side door or back door, we should know the second way out of our homes if there is ever an emergency, okay? Practicing the fire drills gives uh, practice to our children and repetitiveness. Children work well with things uh, of, uh, with repetitiveness. Knowing a, a safe spot outside the home, a safe zone where they, where they, they should know they should meet every time there's an emergency, Okay, you want to make sure our child, our children go there, our family members go there. Okay, once you leave a emergency uh, situation, you never want to return to that situation. Not for a pet, not for a um, for birth certificate or mail or anything, because all those things should be replaced. A lot of times, people leave an emergency situation and return, and the outcome isn't great. It isn't one that. Uh, is favorable for that person. So with that being said, know the type of building you live in. Know if it's fireproof, if it has sprinklers, if you have a standpipe, meaning that the building is supplied with water from the fire department, from us, okay? Know if it's fireproof, non-fireproof. You can tell by if you go in the hallways, if it's sprinklered, or if you're in the sta staircase, you see a big red pipe, okay? Those are signs that the, your building is fireproof. Non-fireproof buildings are gonna be smaller style buildings. Um, private homes are not fireproof. Smaller tenements, walk-ups are not fireproof majority of the time, okay? Big thing, never enter an elevator if there's an emergency. Always use the stairs to go down, okay? If you enter one staircase and there's smoke in that staircase, you wanna close that door, maybe try another staircase if you live in a larger style building. If we live in a smaller uh, home and the staircase is full of smoke and you can't make your way down, you want to get back into your apartment, close the door, call 911 and let them know what's going on. Tell them you're still in your apartment, you can't get out because the hall and the staircase are filled with smoke. These are some just some safety tips. Uh, do I have any questions? Hi, everyone. Feel free to unmute yourself if you have any questions. And I'm also unmuting um, everyone. Uh, in the chat, or feel free to type in your messages in the chat box as well. Good morning. This is Tina from Manhattanville. I'd like to know, most people, you said that if there's a fire, we could use baking soda. A lot of people put the baking soda in the refrigerator, and that's a no-no because they got the refrigerator as water. Where you suggest that we store the baking soda just in case of a fire? Okay. Um, you can still keep that baking soda in that refrigerator. But a lot of times I urge people to make sure you get a second box or bottle of baking soda and keep that near the stove. We don't want to place it above the stove because if you do have an open flame and you go to reach for that box or bottle of baking soda, guess what? Now you're going to burn yourself. But I always urge to keep a fresh bottle or box near the, near the stove so you can use it. Um, the one that's in your fridge is no good because most of the time it's been there for years. It's coagulated, it, it absorbed all the moisture out of your fridge already, fridge already, so it's gonna be hard. So you can just leave that one there and just try to purchase a new one. Um, hi, I have a question. I, ins I always had a box of coarse salt on top of my refrigerator for that purpose. Are you nope. suggesting replacing the coarse yes. salt? With not not flour, not salt. Well, flour, soda. of course not. That would yeah. really. I, I've, I've heard it all. You'd be surprised oh. what I've heard. Cornstarch, salt, oh. baking soda. Yeah. <laughs> no, we want to use baking soda because baking soda is sodium bicarbonate. Like I said, it's uh -huh. exactly what's in a uh, smoke uh, fire extinguisher. Okay. Thank you. Good to know. 
Oh, also, I do have a bone to pick. I don't want uh -oh. people smoking outside. It's like you want to kill yourself through smoking, do it in your own house. Um, yes. But how about suggesting that people use a, um, like a, a glass jar as an ashtray? Well, we just urge for people to use a, uh, a proper ashtray. Meaning being, because when you do extinguish that cigarette, uh, usually they're deeper, so the ashes uh -huh. and the cigarette butts stay within that ashtray. That's the best thing. Okay. Great questions, uh, everyone, and thank you. Um, does anyone have additional questions for Firefighter uh, Terrence Kibi at this time? Well, I'm sorry, I was a little late. I, I came in while you were showing um, the surge protectors. Um, are you saying not to use them or just make sure um, you're not buying the legitimate one? No, if we're, gonna, if, we're, if we're using a surge protector or a power strip, they're not made for air conditioners. They're not made oh, oh, for oh, refrigerators, yeah. things like that. So if you do need to use an extension cord, it should be a one, uh, one outlet item and it should be made especially for the item that you're using. Uh -huh. using it for, whether it be a fridge, microwave, or air conditioner. That's all we're saying. Okay. Do I have any other questions? Oh, and was there something, did I miss a topic before that? Oh, no, I started off with the surge uh, protectors. I just did a brief introduction okay. of myself, and then I started off with that. Okay, thank you. No problem. Um, FDNY forward, uh, FDNY smart forward slash connect is a website where you can get a lot of information. A lot of the useful tips I just gave it, they're on there. There are a few podcasts, even there's, um, an activity book that you can download for smaller children. And this is just another way to stay, uh, stay intertwined with the fire department and what we have going on, trying to keep New York safe. With that being said, I want to thank everyone for their time. Everyone stay safe and thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Firefighter uh, Terrence Keeban. I'm going to include the link um, in the chat box. For yes, there time, it is. Correct? Thank you. Okay. No, thank you. Uh, Take care. And oh. Yes, no, thank you very much. And this concludes our English uh, portion of the uh, fi summer fire safety tips for older adults. Um, and now we're uh, going to go into the Spanish uh, portion, which is uh, from 11.30 to 12 o'clock. Uh, and I, we look forward to hearing the Spanish version. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, welcome uh, to the Spanish uh, portion of the summer fire safety tips for older adults. And uh, feel free to ask questions by typing them in the chat box or by unmuting yourself. And uh, thank you all for joining us. And over to you, Firefighter uh, Kibi. Thank you. Good morning. I'm back. I thought I was uh, escaping the second presentation, but I'm actually going to be hosting the presentation. And I have uh, my translator here with me, Fabrizio. Uh, he's the Director of Community Affairs for the Fire Department. And I just would like to thank everyone for their time and joining this meeting. Um, just a brief introduction, uh, Firefighter Terrence Kibi. I am a uh, firefighter in Northern Manhattan. Uh, joined the Fire Safety Pro Unit two years ago, uh, just to do a little more than just work in the 10 block radius that my firehouse is located in uh, the Harlem, Washington Heights area. Um, and I'm gonna talk. So, quería dar la bienvenida hoy uh, el bombero Kibi. Está hablando de que él es un bombero en, en Alto Manhattan um, y que hoy vamos a aprender y enseñar sobre uh, requisitos para tener prevención de fuego en, 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 en los hogares de uno. Didn't tell me. All right, good morning, everyone. With the summer upon us, the first thing I want to touch base is, is using uh, surge protectors or power strips and extension cords. 
Um, the fire department doesn't say you can't use them, but if we're gonna be using them, we should be using them properly, okay? We should not be plugging air conditioners, microwaves or refrigerators into these things. Basically, anything that heats or cools your home should be plugged directly into an outlet. El bombero Kibi quiere empezar a uh, explicar uh, seguridad de electricidad. Ahora en el verano con la gente tratando de mantener, uh, uh, mantener o eh, ir contra el calor, uh, con, conectando el aire acondicionado o cosas que enfrían, uh, técnicamente con los protectores de sobretensión o con las puertas de extensión electro, eh, eléctrica, a uh, uno le to toca tener cuidado. Técnicamente, un, un protector de sobretensión o una cuerda de extensión, uh, uno no debe comprarlo así en cualquier lugar. Debe tener uh, un tipo de marca que significa que ha sido examinado, ha sido aprobado. Uh, él va a explicar un poco más, pero técnicamente es el UL. Si tiene la, el, la aprobación de UL, uh, eso significa que ha sido aprobado y que ha sido examinado uh, como como algo que sí, que sí ayuda con, con, con extender la electricidad. Él dijo que técnicamente esto no significa que da más electricidad. Esto solo, solo uh, extiende la corriente que existe ahora en, en la casa. En realidad, cualquier cosa que enfría o calienta, cualquier electrónico que calienta o enfría, so un aire acondicionado, una nevera, uh, un, un, un calentador, Técnicamente no puede ser conectado en uno de estos. Le toca conectarlo directamente a la pared. Si uno conecta a una de estas cosas, un aire acondicionado o un, un electrónico que enfría o calienta, uh, causa más corriente y puede causar un fuego. Okay. With that being said, the next thing I want to touch base on is cooking. Everyone has to cook. Everyone has to eat, right? Fire department urges right size lid. Okay. I know it's hard and most of us aren't trained to cook like that. We just use one lid for everything, especially myself. I was raised by my grandmother in a Spanish home. It was one lid for everything. So um, reason being, if there is a fire, it stays smothered in this pan, okay? It doesn't, air doesn't escape. You don't get more or less, okay? Everything's contained and smothered within this pot, okay? We're gonna turn that stove off, leave the pot there and just leave it covered. El, el bombero explica que va, a, vamos a hablar sobre la seguridad cuando uno cocina, porque algunos juegos sí empiezan por el descuido cuando uno está cocinando. Técnicamente empieza cuando, eh, con el sartén de uno. Uh, cuando uno cocina, le toca asegurarse que la tapa de un sartén es medida o la apropiada, porque a veces, si, no, si, si es más grande o más pequeña, técnicamente no cubre el, 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 el sartén en caso que se enciende o, o, o algo coja fuego. Uh, tener una, un, 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 el, 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 la lata de un, de un sartén apropiada significa que cuando te toca poner la sobra para quitarle el aire al fuego, eso ayuda para apagar. Another big tip, baking soda. Everyone should have baking soda near their stove, okay? Not the same baking soda that you have in your refrigerator because that one is already old and hard. We want to keep a fresh bottle or box of baking soda near. Okay, we're going to use that on grease and oil fires. Okay, we never use water because water magnifies that fire. So, like I said, this is made for grease or oil. We're going to we're going to pop that top off or rip that box open. We're going to pour that baking soda in the pot, and it's going to suppress that fire. Lo que está explicando es con los fuegos que son causados por la quemadura de de, de aceite. Uno no puede poner agua. Siempre cuando uno pone agua en un, en un fuego de aceite, uh, en un sartén, eso hace que el fuego se, se engrande. Um, la realidad es que uno debe usar bicarbonato de soda porque el bicarbonato de soda apaga directamente un fuego de aceite uh, en un sartén. Uno abre el bicarbonato de soda, lo pone encima y lo tapa para que apague el fuego. Okay. Next thing I'm going to touch base on is uh, smoke detectors. Everyone should have these. Okay, this is your first line of defense against uh, a fire in your home. Right now, uh, the fire department has a program with the Red Cross that they will come to your home and install them absolutely free. The program is on pause due to the circumstances that we're living in. 
Um, but the number for that is 1-877-RED-CROSS. That's 1-877-RED-CROSS. El bombero estaba explicando que el, la parte, es importante tener un detector de humo, un detector de monóxido de carbono. Es, es, es necesario porque es, es, es la primera línea de defensa contra un fuego en una, en una casa porque lo alerta a uno. Uh, tener una alarma uh, en, un, en un fuego siempre rescata o ayuda a rescatar a la gente porque tienen, uh, saben si hay una emergencia uh, ya al principio de, de, de algo grave que, que puede suceder. Um, la realidad es que en 70% de las, de, de las casas, a uh, la gente que, que, que va al hospital o muere en fuego, realmente el no, 70% de, las, de los hogares no tienen uh, alarmas que funcionan o no existen. Eso es importante. Hice un mensaje que siempre el departamento de bomberos urge a los neoyorquinos siempre tener uh, una alarma o una alarma en cada habitación o cada piso de su hogar. Uh, y para alarmas de, car de monóxido de carbono, una en cada piso de, de su hogar. Uh, Técnicamente, uh, cerca de la cocina o, 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 o en un sótano donde, donde haya gas o, 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 o donde, donde eh, técnicamente sí, donde están gas en, en, el, en el sótano. Él estaba explicando también que el departamento, uh, en colaboración con, con la Cruz Roja, Roja Americana, uh, dan un programa que ahorita está en pausa por, por las circunstancias de COVID-19, uh, pero nosotros técnicamente trabajamos con la Cruz Roja para dar esto gratis. Uh, cuando, cuando ya, ya estemos listos para anunciar y tratar de traer ese programa de nuevo, el número para llamar es el 1877-REDCROSS. -E so en inglés, Red Cross. 1877 Red Cross. With that being said, this is a dual uh, CO smoke detector, meaning it's carbon monoxide and smoke. Okay, this is a newer style one where the battery is built in. We no longer have to replace this battery twice a year. It should last 10 years from uh, date of installation. If not, like I said, take advantage of that program from the Red Cross and get, get yourself a new, uh, a new smoke detector. Solo hablando un poquito más de la, los detectores de humo de, de monóxido de carbono. Los nuevos modelos que ya han... Que, los, los, uh, los supers o, o, o los edificios donde uno vive, les toca tener ya estos nuevos modelos que uno no cambia la batería. Ya están instaladas y duran para 10 años. Uh, si uno tiene la batería y no lo han cambiado, te toca asegurar que aunque sea este nuevo, nuevo modelo o que sea uno de batería, te toca examinarlo dos veces al año. Prefer prefer Técnicamente, en, en, dos veces al año cuando uno cambia los relojes. Pero, ¿le alguien explain the, how to test it? Or? Yeah. Okay. Él ahorita explica cómo uno lo examina, pero él está, como dije, si quiere uno de los nuevos modernos o los nuevos modelos, siempre vaya para los 10 años. Eso es lo único, el único modelo que ya las tiendas les toca vender. Si uno tiene de batería que les toca cambiar la batería, asegúrate que se la estás cambiando cuando oyes el ruido constáneo, que es como un, que es como un pito, pip, pip, así. Uh, eso significa que, que uno le toca cambiar la batería. Pero si tienen esto, te toca examinarlo dos veces al año para ver si, si, si sirve. Él va ahorita a explicar cómo uh, examina si una alarma está funcionando y ahorita yo les explico. With testing these to, uh, twice a year, like uh, he stated, we want to make sure we hold this button. We're going to hold this button for about 10 seconds. And the first set of beeps you're going to get are three slow beeps. You're going to hear the beep, beep, beep. Those are the beeps that we're familiar with. Those are, those are sounds for smoke, okay? The second sound, since this is a dual uh, carbon monoxide and smoke detector, the second sound are gonna be four rapid beeps. You're gonna hear them uh, repeatedly and a lot faster sequence. They're gonna go beep, 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 beep. Those, that's the sound for carbon monoxide. Remember, we wanna hold this button for about 10, 15 seconds and those sounds will happen. So, lo voy a explicar, lo voy a hacer así en vivo, pero lo que él dijo es que, como estaba diciendo, cada, cada do, dos veces al año examinar la, los, las alarmas, pero realmente yo les sugiero 
que mensualmente um, trate de revisarlo solo por empujando el botón. Lo voy a hacer ahora. El, el primer ruido que son cuatro sonidos no constantáneos, pero más divididos, son para alertarle que el, el alarma de humo está trabajando. Después de esos cuatro, que, que vaya dos veces en secuencia, va a haber cuatro ruidos en secuencia más rápidas que hacen pip, 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 pip. Eso significa que el, la alarma de monóxido de carbono está trabajando. Mira, les voy a explicar. Uno para examinar empuja el botón, lo tiene para 10, 15 segundos. Ese es de humo. Que no son rápidos. Ese significa que el humo está trabajando. Ese es de, carbón, de monóxido de carbono. Monóxido de carbono. Le toca hacer dos veces. Y en el final, si oyes ese pito, significa que ya la alarma uh, está funcionando de nuevo. Si así uno examina, así uno oye los ruidos. Si tú oyes esos ruidos cuatro veces rápido, eso significa que hay algo de, de gas. Si son cuatro veces más despacio, eso es humo y que hay un fuego. That pretty much uh, covers this aspect of the lecture. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is uh, candle usage. Still a lot of people throughout the city are using candles. Um, the fire department would like to recommend using LED candles, something similar to this. They do make a nicer style one. Um, but if you're not using this uh, newer style candle and you're using an open flame candle, we just want you guys to use the proper precautions. Make sure that candle's in the middle of the table, uh, away from small children, away from pets. Okay, let's try not to keep that candle on the windowsill. Still, the elderly like to uh, keep their candles at that location. Um, anytime we go to bed, we want to make sure that candle's extinguished. Anytime we leave the home, we want to make sure that candle's extinguished. Okay, these are just a few tips uh, to stay safe using candles. So, el bombero estaba explicando que también la, algunas, algunos juegos, o may, hay, hay mayormente parte de juegos que empiezan por el uso de velas. Um, el departamento urge que los neoyorquinos traten de usar velas que no son de fuego, pero son electrónicas así, de batería, que son más, más, uh, que, que dan más seguridad en un hogar. Uh, si uno usa una vela de, de fuego vivo, uh, él sugiere que poner velas en la mitad de una mesa. Uh, si uno sale de una habitación o una pieza y hay una vela prendida, apagarla, no dejarla uh, descuidada. Uh, especialmente cuando hay niños o cuando hay, uh, hay uh, animales o, 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 o perros o gatos que tengan en la casa porque a veces lo pueden tumbar y eso causa un fuego. También hablan de las velas cuando la gente lo, la, lo, lo pone alrededor de una ventana. Uh, el departamento ha visto por tener velas descuidadas y cuando está cerca de una ventana un viento lo puede noquear y causa un fuego. También no tener uh, velas cerca de cortinas. Uh, porque con cualquier cosa que es flamable, eso puede causar un, un, un fuego y una situación bien, bien urgente. Um, next thing, smoking. Still the number one cause of fire across the country. People are still smoking irresponsibly. Um, we would love to urge everyone to go outside and smoke, but that's not the case. Still, people are still smoking in their homes. If we're going to smoke inside, Let's be a little more responsible. We should not be smoking in bed. Should not be smoking laying down on the couch. Okay. Also, another big thing, if we're going to smoke, let's use the proper style ashtray. Let's not use cups. Let's not use plates. Okay. We must make sure that cigarette butt is fully extinguished. That's why we urge proper ashtray. You get that ashtray. It's nice and deep. In the bottom of that ashtray, we want to place a little bit of water. We take that cigarette butt and fully extinguish it in that water. Um, so, otra, otra causa de fuegos es el descuidamiento de la gente que fuma. Uh, técnicamente, eh, el bombero estaba explicando que si uno fuma en la casa, tener cuidado. Técnicamente, tratamos de sugerir que, los, que la gente fume afuera de la casa. Uh, en mayoría de fuego que es causado por, el, por, por fumar, vemos que la gente fuma, se, se descuide, se, 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 se duerme. Y las cenizas de, 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 de un cigarrillo hace que prende, que, que causa un fuego. Uh, 
lo que decimos o, o lo que urge el, el departamento de bomberos es que si va a fumar en la casa, tener un cenicero que tenga agua o, o un poquito de agua en el cenicero para asegurarse cuando uno apaga un cigarrillo que lo está apagando apropiadamente. Um, además de eso, no fumar cerca cosas. Si, si uno uh, usa tanques de aire o, 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 o aparatos para respirar, no trata de fumar cerca de eso porque eso también puede causar fuego. All right. Last but not least, we should know the type of residence we live in. Know the type of building you live in. If you live in a private home, know your exits. Know where that side door is, where that back door is. Make sure they're all in blocked. Okay, if you live in a smaller tenement, uh, a walk-up style building with four or five floors, maybe less, and you do not have uh, fire escapes, make sure that second means of egress, meaning that second door in your apartment isn't blocked by furniture. Okay, if we live in a larger style building that it has multiple floors, that is a fireproof building. We want to make sure that that building is fireproof and want the tenants to know you are safe in your apartment. There's no need to run out unless the fire's in your apartment. So, la parte importante de cualquier forma de prevención contra los fuegos es saber el tipo de edificio en el cual el el quien uno viva, um, la identificación de, de un edificio que es contra fuegos o, 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 o que no es contra fuegos es importante. Um, la realidad es que la mayoría de edificios ahora en Nueva York uno puede identificar si es uh, la construcción es contra o contra fuego o no es contra fuego. Uh, el, la marcación está cerca a uh, la caja de correo en un edificio. Uh, es, es una marcación que ha, se ha puesto por el Departamento de Edificios de Nueva York uh, y eso es muy importante saber porque en, una, en un edificio que, que es contra fuegos, si hay un fuego y, no el, y el fuego no está pasando en el apartamento en, o, o en el hogar de uno, la, la realidad es quedarse en el apartamento, poner una toalla abajo uh, de la puerta para bloquear el, el humo y esperar cerca a una ventana uh, para que lleguen los bomberos. Si es, un, si es un edificio, un lugar que no es contra fuego, a uh, uno le toca tener un plan de escape o en cualquier, en cual, cualquier situación tener, tener el plan de escape, pero en un, en un edificio que no es contra fuegos, a uh, uno le toca saber todas las avenidas o todas las salidas uh, por la ventana uh, o, 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 o los diferentes puertas y tener no bloqueado eh, esas formas de, de salir. Um, la realidad es que en un edificio que no es contra fuegos, uno le toca salirse inmediatamente, pero en forma uh, apropiada y, y en realidad en las, en, las, en las dos situaciones, que sea contra fuego o, 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 o un edificio que no es contra fuego, um, uh, uno le toca siempre tener un plan de escape. Basically, that's a small presentation on fire safety tips. Do I have any questions? El bombero ya dice que ese es el, el final. Si hay unas preguntas sobre, sobre la presentación. Thank you both so much. I'm going to unmute uh, everyone. And if they want to speak, you're more than welcome to do so. Or they could feel free to type in um, their uh, comments or questions in the chat box. Well, One thing, una cosa que sí quiero decir otra vez sobre saber el tipo de edificio, es importante saber y les sugiero saber la diferencia entre un edificio que sí tenga, que sea contra fuego o uno que no es contra fuego. Un edificio que no es contra fuego, si ve Nueva York, son las, los edificios que tienen las escaleras por afuera. El tipo de construcción significa que, que, que no previene y si, ha, si hay un fuego en un apartamento, va a extender a los otros apartamentos. Un edificio que sí es contra fuegos, uh, la realidad es que tiene muchos pisos y además de eso no tiene las escaleras por afuera que uno ve. Y otra vez, es diferente uno cómo trata uh, una situación si hay un fuego en, 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 en los tipos de edificios. Otra vez, si es uno si, que no es contra fuego, uno lo toca inmediatamente poner... Eh, o, 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 o poner en acción el plan de escape que uno le toca coordinar eh, uh, antes o, o coordinar uh, con la familia para saber cómo van a salir 
uh, y dónde se van a encontrar. En un edificio contra fuegos, todavía les, uno les, les toca tener un plan de escape porque es importante tener un plan de escape, pero lo trata diferentemente porque es, en, un, en un edificio contra fuegos es más peligroso salir uh, afuera del apartamento porque técnicamente si hay un fuego en, en, en otro hogar, Técnicamente los edificios con, mantienen o, o, o contienen el, 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 el fuego o la emergencia a, es, a, a, es, a ese piso o a ese, a ese hogar. Uh, pero en las dos situaciones o los, los dos tipos, siempre cualquier persona o cualquier familia le toca tener plan de escape. Thank you both so much. Um, I've uh, included the 877 uh, Red Cross uh, phone number in the uh, chat box um, to, so folks uh, could get free smoke um, and carbon monoxide uh, detectors. Uh, and that number is 877-733-2767. And I've also included the uh, link uh, to your website, which is fdnysmart.org uh, forward slash connect. Perfect, thank you. Thank you so both uh, so much, and I will connect with uh, Caroline uh, to probably uh, have you both, you know, come back to do another update in, you know, uh, the next uh, couple of months as we head into the fall and winter uh, uh, season, and we uh, have to, you know, think about uh, fire safety uh, for the winter in terms of uh, heat blankets and um, holiday lights and all yeah. of uh, that stuff. So thank you both so much for your time. Much appreciated. Thank no, you. Thank you for having us. You have a good day. Take care, everyone. You too. Take care. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. -bye. Bye.